What we're going to be going over in this example is the reconciliation of our pre-tax financial income and our taxable income. And we're going to be calculating our tax expense, our taxable income, and we're also going to have a deferred tax asset and a deferred tax liability. Okay, so let's look at our example here. We're going to be looking at our financial income here, our financial accounting, uh, our book accounting here versus our tax accounting. And what we're going to be doing in this example is we're going to be working back, backwards here. We're going to know what our tax payable is. We're going to start with our tax payable and based on our tax payable we're going to determine what our uh, taxable income is and also our pre-tax financial income. So both of those are going to be unknown here but it's going to be based on this tax payable that we start with and then those differences between our financial accounting and our book accounting. So starting with our tax payable here it's going to be $320,000. Everything is showing in thousands of dollars and we look at our tax rate here for the first year it's 40% and then it's going to reverse or it's going to change for the next year's year X2 here through X5 it's going to switch over to 35%. So starting with our tax rate here 40% knowing our tax payable uh, we can determine our taxable income is here. So that's just our taxable income X here times the 40% tax rate equals our tax payable of 320000 So just um, move, doing our algebra here, our taxable income X here would equal 320000 divided by the 40% tax rate. That equals $800,000. So now we know our taxable income. Now the only thing is we have to account for these changes here between our tax accounting and our financial accounting. So let's start with our non-taxable we're going to have some non-taxable interest revenue here, the A item here. And for tax accounting, we're not going to, it's non-taxable, so we don't recognize as part of our income here. Okay, but for financial accounting, we're going to recognize $10,000 worth of non-taxable in this interest revenue. So that's a permanent difference. That is, it's not going to reverse itself over the next um, years here. Uh, and it's never going to be recognized for tax accounting, but it is recognized here for financial or book accounting. Okay, so we've taken care of our non-taxable income here. Now we have that uh, some depreciation expense. We're going to have $120,000 extra depreciation here for tax accounting over our book accounting. And what it's going to do here, this 120000 is going to reverse itself here for the book accounting purposes in each of the next four years here. We're going to recognize $30,000 each of the next four years here, but nothing here for the first year for our book accounting. Okay, so that would be our depreciation expense. The next thing is some rent collected here. Uh, well, it's going to be, uh, we're going to collect uh, $60,000 worth of rent here, and it's recognized for tax accounting purpose. The entire $60,000 here in the first year here. But for book accounting or financial accounting, the rent is going to be earned $20,000 here in the first year and $20,000 in each of the next two years here. So that's going to be our difference here. So let's go and let's look at how we're, we'll calculate our income here before taxes or pre-tax financial income. So starting with our taxable income that we calculated here of $800,000, then we have to add back our excess depreciation here. So financial purposes, we didn't depreciate any, we didn't use any of that 120000 here for the first year, so we have to add it back to our taxable income. And then our non-tax interest here. Well, for tax accounting purposes, we didn't include it, but for financial accounting, we're going to have to add that back to our taxable income here, the 10000 And then we have some unearned rent here. Well, for finance, we the difference was the rent collected here uh, for tax purposes was the 60000 here, but it was only uh, 20000 here was earned in year X1 here for financial or book accounting. So we're going to have to, there's 20, there's actually 40000 extra uh, revenue, uh, rent collected here in the next two years here that we cannot include here for our financial, our pre-tax financial income. So we're going to have to subtract out the 40000 here that we didn't receive here for our financial accounting purposes, our book accounting here from our taxable income here of 800000 So uh, netting your amounts out here, um, 
you're going to come up with a pre-tax financial income here of $890,000. So you see here, we work backwards here. In this case, we have to determine what our taxable income is here. And then we have to, based on those differences here, we, have, we were able to determine what our pre-tax financial income is here. Now, the next thing is, let's just look at our future deductible, or let's look at our deferred tax asset, calculate that. So that was this uh, 60,000 here in rent collected here. So that's like a prepaid tax here on that rent here for tax accounting purposes. But we did recognize 20,000 here for financial or book accounting. So the difference is gonna give us uh, the future deductible amount in the future here of uh, $40,000. So you take your future deductible amount, that's gonna be the 60,000 here. Uh, in year one here, less uh, for tax accounting, less the 20,000 we already recognize for financial accounting, times the tax rate here for the next years here. That was that we changed from 40% to 35%. So you take your future deductible amount, that'd be 40,000 here, times the 35% future tax rate here is gonna give you a defer, uh, deferred tax asset here of $14,000. So that rent collected here, we have that deferred tax asset here uh, of $14,000. Okay, so now we have a future, let's look at our future taxable amount here. That was that extra depreciation expense here uh, for tax purposes over our financial or our book accounting. So our, that's gonna be a future taxable amount. We uh, take in the whole, uh, recognize the whole 120,000 here in the first year here, but in the next years, we're not gonna be able to deduct any of that here for uh, financial accounting or for tax accounting. We can only deduct it here for financial accounting at 30,000 per year here for the next four years. So that's gonna be a future taxable amount here for our, our tax accounting times our future tax rates. Our future tax amount here, 120,000 times the tax rate here of 35% is gonna give us a deferred tax liability of $42,000 here. So uh, that is our depreciation expense here uh, that ends up in a deferred tax liability because we recognize the whole 120,000 here in the first year here, but we're not gonna be able to uh, expense any of that here in the future, in the next years, X2 through X5. Okay, so now let's go and let's look at how we'd record this here. So what we're gonna be looking at moving down here here, we're going to have this tax payable. That's going to be that current amount of taxes that we're going to pay on it. That's what we calculated up here. And we started, let's look at year X1 here. This tax payable, we have, what was it? $320,000. That was our given amount here, our start amount. So we would credit our tax payable here as a liability on our balance sheet for $320,000. Then the next thing we're going to have to determine is a deferred tax asset and our deferred tax liability. Well, what do we have here for a deferred tax asset here? And uh, that was the 14,000 here. So we're gonna debit or increase our deferred tax asset here for those deferred taxes by 14,000. That's on our balance sheet as in an asset account. And then deferred tax liability, what are we calculated? 42,000 here, so that is a liability and we would credit that here for 42,000. I'm, I'm showing here the deferred tax liability. That was at 120,000 times the 35%, 42,000. And then for that deferred tax asset, just to reference that, that was the 40,000 here times the 35% tax rate. Okay, so now the deferred tax liability here, that's again a liability account here on the balance sheet. You'd credit that here for the $42,000. So just looking at year X1 here. Now, we can calculate our tax expense on our income statement, and that's really a plug or the, the balance here between our tax payable and our deferred tax asset and a deferred tax liability. So let's look at it. Our tax payable, we have a credit here of $320,000. Then for our tax, deferred tax liability, we have another credit here of $42,000. So we uh, that would be an addition, uh, add that in here, 42,000. But for our deferred tax liability, that's a debit. That's gonna re reduce our tax payable here. Whereas the deferred tax liability actually increased our tax payable here. So the deferred tax asset, debit of 14,000 here would be a reduction to our tax payable here of 14,000. So netting those amounts here, you're gonna come up with a tax expense of $348,000. Simply a plug here between your tax payable, deferred tax asset, and your deferred tax liability. You can see debit here, 348,000, balances with the 
um, debit here of 14,000 plus the credits here of 120,000 here for your tax payable and 42,000 here for your deferred tax credit amount here for your deferred tax liability. Okay, and then again, remember in this example, we're just simplifying it here for a deferred tax asset and a deferred tax liability they had a beginning balance of zero for each of those here. So we're just looking at what we uh, started with here for year X1 and what we're deferred tax asset and the deferred tax liability would be here. And just, it just we're not, we don't have to go through the numbers here, but the deferred tax asset would reverse itself out by that $20,000 per year here of uh, that rent that would be earned times the new tax rate of 35 percent would be a credit here to your deferred tax asset of seven thousand which would reduce your de deferred tax asset here and then you had the deferred tax liability that would be reversing itself out here at thirty thousand per year here for that depreciation expense times the tax rate of 35% of would be ten thousand five hundred for uh, each of those next uh, was at next four years here, but I'm just showing the next year here, year X2. And then just for our example here, we're just say for example, our tax payable, we didn't calculate it, but it was given to us at 100, 980,000 times the tax rate of 35% gives us tax payable here of $343,000. So if you look at tax expense here for year X2, again, it just becomes a balance between your uh, the credit here of your tax payable of 340,000 plus the uh, credit here of your deferred tax asset of 7,000 balances and then subtracting out your debit here of um, to your deferred tax liability of 10,500 then you're going to end up with the deb balancing amount that you require here for your tax expense at 339,500. Okay, so you see what's going on here. Your tax expense is simply a plug between ever whatever your tax payable is and that tax payable that's the current amount that tax due here and then you'd have to whatever your whatever is going on in your deferred tax asset and your deferred tax liability account uh, would be included here is either an increase or reduction to your tax payable and then those amounts here would uh, go into your tax expense. So tax expense is simply a, a plug or a balance between your tax payable, deferred tax asset, and deferred tax liability. Okay, so finally let's go and let's look at how we'd record this here. Okay, so let's look at here, let's look at our income tax expense section here on an income statement for the year, first year here, 20X1. So what you would do here for this example here, you would start with your income before taxes. And remember we calculated, that was our pre-tax financial income that we had to calculate here for that first year and that ended up at $890,000. And now we would go and we're gonna subtract our income, we would state, we'd have to divide up our income tax expense here between the current portion here and our deferred portion. So let's look at it. For our income tax expense here, we would state that the current portion is simply our tax payable here of $320,000. So you can go up here and just look at your tax payable here. 300 and credit amount here uh, that you had for first year here at 320,000. Then the deferred portion, well, that's really the difference between what we're sitting here with a deferred tax liability versus our deferred tax asset. So our deferred tax liability here, we had a credit here of 42,000, which is greater than our deferred tax asset. We had a debit here of 14,000. So what we're gonna have here, that's gonna increase our income tax expense, the, the deferred portion here, because the deferred tax liability here of 42,000 is greater than a deferred tax asset here of 14,000. So simply the difference here, 42,000 less 14,000 is gonna give us an income tax expense here of $28,000. Again, only because the, def the liability here, deferred tax liability is greater than the deferred tax asset. So that increases our tax expense here by 28,000, adding our deferred and our current portion of tax expense, you're gonna come up with $348,000. Okay, so that's our income tax expense here uh, for year 20X1. Subtract that here from our income before taxes of $890,000. So you're gonna come up with your net income for the year here at $542,000. So this is how you would uh, state it here, again, on your income tax expense section here, on your income statement. And we're just looking at the first year here, 20X1. And you see here, 
we can go back to our tax payable that what we calculated here that was that 320,000 and then we had the deferred tax liability here of 42,000 and then we subtracted out our deferred tax asset here of 14,000 here and the net amounts come up with, with our tax expense here of $348,000 so that's where we got the 348,000 here for our ink uh, tax expense here broken up here between the current amount here, that's our tax payable, and the deferred portion between, the, in this case, the deferred tax liability versus our deferred tax asset. So that that is how we come up with our income tax expense. And then just our uh, tax ex income tax expense here, subtract that our, from our income before taxes here, that gives us our net income. Okay, so that'll summarize our little example here where we had to work... Uh, we had to determine what we began with our tax payable and then we had to determine what our taxable income was and then determine what our pre-tax financial income was based on some uh, one temporary difference and then a couple permanent differences. Okay, so that'll summarize our topic.